this is the Fearless Agent Podcast, where you learn how to make way more money fast selling real estate with your host, the fearless agent himself, Bob Leffler. And good day to you. This is Bob here at the Fearless Agent Podcast for real estate sales professionals like you, where we explain that everything that you've been taught by the real estate industry is wrong and you will make lots more money in way less time by doing the exact opposite. And I am joined, very fortunate today to be joined by a guest. His name is Edward Encinas from Realty Executives in Tucson. Uh, Thanks for joining us, Edward. Uh, Thank you for having me. And uh, just so the folks out there in podcast land know, you just called me out of the blue and uh, we're just going to do a coat. You volunteered and thank you for doing that. Uh, We're just going to do a coaching session with you live on the air. And uh, then the other people who uh, are considering calling me will either be scared away or they'll embrace the idea based on the outcome of our call. How about that? (laughs) Uh, okay. Nobody's ever been killed. Let me just get that. Ramon, is that true? Has anybody ever been killed? He says no. Nobody's ever been killed. That's the Ramon is in the booth, working the booth. So, Edward, uh, how long have you been in real estate? Uh, just going on six years. Okay. Just renewed my license uh, January 31st. All right. Congratulations on that. And uh, what did you do before real estate? Uh, I was a flooring contractor. Um, I had my own company, installed uh, tile floors. Um, showers, countertops, things of that nature. Uh, ended up with some back problems, back surgery, uh, which caused me to uh, force me to find something else to do. Um, I have three kids that I enjoy spending time with, so I needed to, to uh, find something that had a flexible schedule but still had the potential to earn um, a good income. And you got how many kids? I have three. Well, that's insane. Let me just start with that. And uh, so you have back problems. I have back problems, too. So you say, okay, my back hurts. I need something where I can lay down all day. Real estate. Perfect. What could be better, of course? It's easy. You know, it's not lifting heavy boxes of tile or buckets of thin set. So. That's, true. That's like uh, man work. work. Oh, my gosh. Thank goodness I never had to do anything like that. So uh, uh, This has been harder, believe it. Is that right? Okay. Well, we're <laughs> going to fix that today. I'm go- I promise you we're going to make your life much, much easier today. So... In the past 12 months, uh, how many transactions did you close? Uh, 18. Okay. And do you have an assistant or anything like that? No. No, I'm actually a part of the team down here in Tucson. Did you do all of those 18 by yourself or was that the team? Uh, That was me. Okay. And uh, in Tucson, I'm familiar with, we call it the old Pueblo. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but uh, in Tucson... uh, well, for you, what has your average sales price been? Uh, last year was 187000 Okay. And what do I get square footage-wise for $187,000? Uh, depending on what side of town, um, but more or less maybe 1,600 square feet. Okay. 1,700 so, square feet, three-bedroom, so two-bath. So if I was to buy a 1,600-square-foot, three-bedroom, two-bath house built in the 1960s, I could expect – and it's in average condition, I could expect, expect to pay about one hundred and eighty grand. Uh, depending on what side of town. If you're on the north side of town, um, that's going to go up a little bit. Edward, are you from the hood? I was from the hood. Uh, no, I'm actually a military <laughs> brat. So I are actually you? grew up in Germany and Japan and, and moved to Tucson in 97 when I was about 18, 19 years old. So hmm. it was a bit of a culture shock when I moved out here. That's exotic. So I am a hometown boy from uh, Phoenix or Scottsdale, Arizona, land of the blazing sun, uh, where we have no gangs, but we do have roving bands of very impolite maitre d's. So you want to be careful when you come. So if I'm, I'm going to take 187000 oh, I'm just going to take $180,000. let us use round numbers. $180,000. I'm going to accurately predict your next 12 months income if I coach you, okay? So you can kind of know okay. what that will be. So if I take $180,000 times 4%, uh-oh, I don't know how to do math all of a sudden, $180,000. There's nothing more exciting, Ramon, than doing math on the air. Have you ever noticed that? If you want to ice the crowd, that's how you do it. Times 4%. 
equals 7,200. So you might write that down if you can. So 7,200 would be your gross close commissions because every fearless agent in every price range in every town uh, in America or Canada can easily take listings at 7% and keep four when all other agents are struggling to get 5% or 6%. So your average, and by the way, just so I know, if the money was exactly the same and it was just a personal preference, would you rather do listings only or buyers only? Listings. Okay. And the money would not be the same. You'd make way more money doing listings only. So so that if we take 7200 and multiply that times 40, that would equal $288,000 gross close commissions. And realistically, after all the write-offs and the splits and all the, all the stuff you spend money on that you later regret, you know, the car payment, the insurance, the gas in your car and all that, that probably gets divided by 2 and you end up with 144,000 net like it's a salary job with a company car because you do get to write off your car. So if that happened in the next 12 months with me coaching you, would you be very happy? Uh, yes. Okay. So now what would you say are your three biggest challenges in real estate right now that if I could solve them once and for all while we're on this call that you'd be happiest about? Uh, what to say, when to say, and how to say. Okay. So what – what do you do to generate business? What have you been doing for the last six years that's maybe been the most successful for you? Um, a lot of it's been my sphere. Okay. Those 18 uh, transactions that you did, how many of those were your sphere? Uh, probably maybe a third of those. Oh, that's quite a few. And then... I uh, suck at math, but I think that's six. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. And Ramon says yes. It looks exciting from here. <laughs> You yeah, maybe, a, maybe a little bit more than that, but um, but yes, yeah, so I would say that. And then the rest were, were leads. So I, I am on a team where the, the team leader does provide, um, is willing to provide leads. What does that look uh, like, the leads you are provided? What are they? Um, they're various, you know, obviously Zillow, you have your pay-per-click and, and stuff like that. So, okay. you know, we're... We're being put in front of people, and so I guess it comes down to what I'm saying and how I'm saying it, or what I'm not saying it, <laughs> what I'm not saying. So uh, mm-hmm. I come down to, to realize it's all, like you said, um, realize I've been taught the wrong stuff. Mm-hmm. Is it fair to say and, that those leads are mostly buyer leads? Yes. Okay. If I coach you, I want you to never call a buyer lead again as long as you live, so help me little baby Jesus. Could you consider that? That would be the plan. You know, okay. my whole thing is uh, dealing with listings. You know, okay. I've been spending five years dealing with buyers and <laughs> spending my will. So okay, let um, me let me have you write these things down. So here's the sources of business for guys like you, gals like you, people like you, realtors. So one would be calling your sphere. These are the proactive sources. Now the the reactive sources would be the leads. Uh, spending lots of time and money and energy on advertising uh, things that rarely ever pay off. People calling you, you know, your sphere, the people, that, your friends that call you. But the proactive way you're going to make money, which is all the money you're not making now, the difference between the 18 transactions you closed and the 40 that you're going to in the next 12 months minimum, is going to be from these sources. So it would be proactively calling your sphere asking for referrals. It would be um, cold calling up and down the street through neighborhoods. It would be door knocking, weather permitting. Now in Tucson, it's about 10 degrees cooler than Phoenix. I don't know if you know that, which means it's only 150 in the summer in Tucson. Am I right? Yeah, uh, yeah. about. <laughs> like, in, like in Phoenix... Uh, I don't know if you heard about this, but the nuclear power plant melted down and the asphalt became molten and uh, people were saying, yeah, but, you know, it's a dry heat. So what are you going to do? So that's fine. So then uh, the third thing would be or the fourth thing, whatever thing we're on, would be calling for sale by owners. Uh, Then there's calling expireds and canceled. Then there's holding open houses and there are no other things. So all the, all the agents who make the really big bucks 
are proactively doing th- those things. So I always say the secret to life is not doing what you love, but it is more about avoiding what you hate. So I don't want to have you doing anything that you're going to hate so much it's going to you know suck the life out of you. So uh, are there any of those things, so we'll just review them, calling your sphere, uh, calling, uh, cold calling up and down the street, door knocking, uh, calling for sale by owners, calling expireds and canceled, or holding open houses. Are there any of those things that you would be unwilling to do even for $400 an hour? No, I'm, I'm willing to do them all, and I've been doing them. I'm just, uh, like I said, I'm not saying the right thing or the, the, I'm not giving off the right message, so. Yeah, let the record show that Edward is a capitalist. He's willing to do anything for money. I like that. So, um, so here's the here's the good news. The way you are on the phone, I always I always uh, listen to people how they are on the phone, and I always ask myself when I've you know I just met you literally five minutes ago. I always just think the way Edward is on the phone, would I list my house with him? In other words, does he sound like a nice, decent, honest guy, not based on your skills, but, you know, how you are on the phone? So obviously you've been in the business for six years. I mean, a lot of people I coach got into the business like yesterday. Some of them have been in the business for 30 years, but you know how to do everything. It's not like you don't know how to do it. So it's just about getting in front of people, getting the opportunity to get in front of more people, and we're talking lots more people, and then getting them to sign up at full commission with a full-term listing and then getting them to beg you to underprice their house on day one. So that's the experience every fearless agent has. So so let's just start with um, uh, where should you prospect, okay? So you, one thing I recommend to everybody and almost all of my students, do you use Mojo by any chance? Uh, no, the dialer. Have you heard of that? MojoSells.com. So if you could write yeah, that down. Mojo dialer. Yeah. So it is a three-line dialer. They sell you the data, the people that call, the for sale by owner leads, expired leads. And then uh, it really, I would look at it this way, it's kind of a message-leaving machine. Now, do, I do have people that don't use Mojo. They dial with their finger and they get the data someplace else. But I don't have anybody, I don't think, that I coach that uses a competitor of Mojo. I don't also allow myself to be paid to promote anything. I just promote things that I believe in. But uh, it's it's your database. It's the three-line dialer. It's the, the data, the, the leads. It's everything in a one-stop shopping arrangement. So I do recommend that. Anybody who has Mojo and Fearless Agent only – is going to get rich if I tell if I if they do what I tell them to do, and you'll never need any marketing. You'll never need to buy leads or any of that stuff you're doing now. So that would make your life simpler, I think. My team leader spent fifty thousand dollars on leads last year for a team of about six or seven. Well, how many transactions closed did the whole team do last year? Do you know? Um, yeah, about. So it's a little skewed as he's a he's a big flipper. Let's take those out of it. And so about 50 or 60. Okay, about, so about that's, what, that's so. what you're going to do by yourself, and you'll have one assistant. So that illustrates a point that I always make. Teams are the least profitable business model in the history of real estate. So I coach different kinds of people. There's husband-wife 50-50 partnerships or mother-daughter, two guys, a guy and a gal, whatever, unmarried. Um, then there's uh, a guy like you with an executive assistant. Then there's just a guy like you with yourself as your own assistant, I guess, uh, which is kind of what you are now. Then there's uh, small teams, big teams. So by far the least profit, assuming that all of them are equally hardworking, by far the least profitable would be the big team and uh, the most profitable is the 50-50 partnership. Second would be just an agent with an executive assistant. So um, I will, I would uh, – everybody that's on a team that I coach, I say get off the team, you know, if you can. If you can't, you can't. Sometimes people are stuck, you know, how it goes. But uh, I would say you, you are the – so Edward Encinas is the brand. 
that's what we want to make famous. There's a whole uh, town in Tucson full of people that are suffering from Edward Who disease. We need to fix that. And then Mojo was going to fix that. You'll be dropping messages, asking people if they want to sell their house all over town. And you do that over and over and over and you become kind of famous that way. So who do you target? Um, and by the way, if anybody out else is out there if anybody is there anybody out there ramon is anybody listening to us three people maybe so if you're if any of this stuff makes sense to you and you're earning less selling real estate than you wish you were and you're open to the idea of having some help you can call me like edward did uh, if you can learn you want to learn more call me anytime at 480-385-8810 that's my cell phone and just see if you and what you're trying to do and what we do at Fearless Agent, if it would even be a good fit. I love talking to realtors. I don't want anybody to think they're bothering me. I thank you calling for calling me Edward. You didn't uh, – you reached out, so that's uh, brave, I guess. And if anybody out there can't afford coaching right now but you wish you could, please go to fearlessagent.com. And I think you did that, didn't you, Edward? You watched the video? I did. And watch the webinar. It's about 45 minutes long. Take lots of notes. It didn't scare Edward away, so uh, you might like it too. And then go to our video training page. And my guarantee to you is the free videos on my training page are better coaching than you would pay any other coach any amount of money for in America. And if you ever have a question, you can always call me because we want to help you for free until you can afford us. So back to Edward. So Here's here's now in Tucson. I'm very familiar with Tucson. Um, there's like any town. There's the good side of town and the hood side of town, right? So if if you and, I, and if I'm correct, is it which side of town, east or west, would be considered better than the other? Um, it was actually in its hands. I would say more more the east side now has more issues. East side uh, is better. No, no, it has more issues than than the than, west side. Than the west side, and then southwest, and then uh, north. I think is better than south, isn't it? Typically. Oh uh, yeah. So and in Phoenix, on, uh, when you when you talk about south, if you get into South East and Green Valley, that's a little bit different. Right, but uh, I mean, but I mean, yeah, like downtown overall. Phoenix. You know, if I drive west, it, people tend to think that's a little hoodier than the east side, and north is nicer than the south side. If I'm in Salt Lake City, the uh, uh, let me think. The west side is not as good. The east side is better. The, the north side is worse. The south side is better. So every town has that. So if you, if you go to the good side of town, you want to focus your prospecting there, and you're looking for older neighborhoods with older people because they have something called equity to pay you with. I don't know if you know this or not, Edward, but uh, I'm coming out with a new cologne. Have you heard about that? Yeah, it's called equity. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it kind of smells like old people, like that Ben Gay and mothball smell. Have you ever smelled that? Old yeah, people's houses. I have. Yeah. So if you're driving by a neighborhood on the good side of town and it smells a little like mothballs and Ben Gay, you go, oh, that smells like equity. There's money there for me. So those are the people you want to call. And if you want to have nonstop problems in real estate, you want to be talking to younger people who are thin on the equity. Okay. So how old are you, Edward? Uh, 41. Okay. So you're a little on the young side. Most people that are homeowners that are 41 don't have any equity. People my age who are, you know, I'm so old that uh, there was uh, two less stars on the flag when I was born, if that tells you. You know, I, my, my baby photos were taken by Matthew Brady. I think that's a bad sign. But um, the, the idea is older people have equity, so focus on the older neighborhoods. Anything in Tucson built after 2000 would be kind of too new. So you just want to load as many single-family home neighborhoods into Mojo as you can and cold call those people. So every day I want you to do this. So this will be what your day looks like. 9 a.m., I want you to start your day prospecting on the telephone calling first your sphere, which would be – you know, let's say there's 100 people in your sphere. You don't want to bug them too often asking for referrals. So maybe three calls a year. So that would be 300 total. So maybe one call a day on average, okay? And then you would be using the words that I give you. Then you would go to uh, any new for sale by owners. We're not going to call old stale for sale by owners. Then you would go to any new expireds and canceled. And if you get them live, 
you book the appointment. If you don't get them live, you leave the fearless agent message. If they're serious, they will call you because we have the right words to leave. And then you would go to any follow-up calls from previous cold calling. That's where the really big bucks gets made. And then finally, you just want to spend as many hours as you can blasting through brand new cold calls up and down the street through neighborhoods that have equity. And uh, not every house would have equity, but the neighborhoods would be likely to. And then uh, you're going to so have, have right now business and future business. So the right now business is going to come from the sphere calls, asking for referrals, and the FISBOs, and the expireds, and the follow-up calls, and the cold calling. But the future business is almost all going to be from your sphere and from the cold calls. So you need right now money and you need sphere money. So the, the formula for you to do 40 transactions in the next uh, 12 months, and which would be 288,000 gross close commissions, 144 net taxable, is to schedule five listing appointments a week. You just don't get off the phone until that thing happens. And then two of those on average would cancel. That would be normal. And then uh, you would go on three, and then you would get one of those and get it at 7% and keep four. So uh, the goal for you is not the 40, it's not the 288, it's not the 144, it's five. So forget everything except five. Don't get off the phone until you schedule five listing appointments a week. I would recommend that you refer all the buyers to some other agent in your company that doesn't like listings, but they do like buyers. And either you would take a 50% referral fee, a 30% referral fee, or a 20% referral fee based on uh, what you did up front. And okay. then make sure your butt's in the seat making your calls all day. And, you know, I talked to a guy yesterday, and he was telling me how he is now addicted to cold calling. And he literally would rather just call and not go on the appointments. Now, usually the appointment is fun. You get to meet with the people. You know, that's more fun than the cold calling. That at some point will go the other way. And you'll say, gee, I wish I didn't have to get dressed up and go on the appointment and do all that. I'd rather just sit here and cold call. That will happen to you. But okay. you sound great on the phone. Like So what I need from you uh, if we're gonna, if I'm gonna coach you, this is how I would know my coaching would be a good fit for you. So I'll, I'll ask you: um, Are you the kind of guy that would do exactly what I tell you to do if I didn't tell you to do anything complicated or hard? Yeah, okay. uh, I tried it my way. My way doesn't work. Okay, <laughs> and uh, which sounds like a country song, Ramon. I'm not sure if you heard that one or not, but I think that is a country song. Uh, sounds a little like Mel Tillis. So then, uh, who said, take me back to Tucson? Remember Mel Tillis? He said, take me back to Tucson. By the way, if any of you would like to send your referrals to Tucson, you could call Edward at 520-401-9131. Is that correct? That is correct. And uh, that would be toll-free, day or night. He'd be happy to help you. That, in f folks, was a shameless plug, in case you missed it. But um, so... If you are willing to learn five presentations, so it's listing, pricing, for sale by owner, buyer, and investor, and then we teach you how to present offers in a different way than everybody else does it. So those are the basically six presentations that we teach. And just be very uh, pure to those and then uh, uh, get – the other thing is to be very pure to the dialogues that we teach you on the phone. And if you've ever heard any other coach in America say it, never say it, uh, get all of that baloney out of your head if you've ever heard any of that stuff, and I'm sure you have. And then uh, just be nice like you are and then get your schedule right. So your schedule is going to go like this. By the way, does that sound like something you could do, Edward? Yes. Okay. You'll feel much more confident when you have the right words to say when you're face to face. And then that's going to make you more eager to prospect because you know you're not going to choke when you get there. It's kind of why my company is called Fearless Agent, basically. So at noon, I want you to go to lunch every day. At 5 p.m., I want you to eat dinner every day. 
and I want you to schedule all your listing appointments at either 2.30 or 7 p.m., and that allows you to do two listings in one day, not be hungry and cranky and tired, start your day prospecting at 9 a.m., call till noon, lunch at noon. If you don't have an afternoon appointment, back on the phone till 5, dinner at 5. If you don't have a listing appointment, you could keep calling until 8 if you're like me because you like money. Take weekends off. You know, you got kids, remember? Remember the kids? Yeah. Okay. We were, we were talking yeah. about money. We forgot we had kids. But I'll tell you what, I have a daughter that's 23 in graduate school. You're going to need money. So Yeah, I got two that are graduating high school. They're graduating they're high school? NA- yeah, I want to head enough to NAU um, here in a couple months. So, <laughs> so you got yeah. two kids that were able to accomplish what I was unable to do, which is graduate high school. So God bless them. And they're going to NAU? Uh, one of them is going to NAU. The other one is thinking about maybe getting her uh, real estate license and working with me. Or That's the uh, one who drinks and smoke pot, I guess, right? Nope, she doesn't. Oh. Actually, they don't do none of that. Thank They're, God. Uh, great, uh, great kids, straight-A students. Now, my uh, daughter went to NAU. Oh, did she? She was That's a lumberjack. Like yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the yeah. mascot, not her job. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, yep. that's cool. So, so, yeah, they're excited, and I got one. So you get one of them to become a realtor. We call that slavery in the old days. So <laughs> child labor well, laws she, against that, but that's the way it goes. She may go and work with the airlines. We sent her to Europe last year to, to travel since I grew up overseas. I wanted her to experience some of the stuff that I did, and she fell in love with this. So she may decide to go work with the airlines and uh, be able to travel and wow. save money that way. So she's like, I got no boyfriend. I got nothing, you know, no kids, no attachments. So let me go travel and, and enjoy the next five I years. was thinking about sending my daughter to Europe, but I figured she'd probably be able to find her way back, so I skipped that. <laughs> the other one's going to China <clears throat> this April. I told my daughter, you know, you were adopted. She goes, no, I wasn't. I go, yeah, they brought you back. You know, it's kind of sad. <laughs> so, uh, okay, Edward. So here's – now, by the way, the coaching – involves this. You can call me anytime, okay? If you ever have a question, I I don't want you to ever hesitate calling me. I got nothing better to do than to make you rich. Uh, We're going to ship out five presentations. It comes with the visuals. You're going to make no changes in the visuals except for your Realty Executives brand logos. And then uh, it comes with a USB drive with audio and video of me demonstrating those presentations so you learn them at your own pace. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to email to you all the prospecting dialogues for every live call situation and then a message left version for when you don't get them live for every situation, FISBO expired, everything. There's an open house dialogue so you know what to say at an open house that's completely different than every other agent does. And then um, – Oh, the first three parts of the most important parts of the listing presentation. So that's in print. So you would immediately start learning that. Now, when we ship to Tucson, I think you get it like the very next day. So you won't have uh, too much of a lag time. And then it is $997 one-time membership fee. We are raising the price. Uh, your price will always stay the same. So when you hear me, this is recorded for people. Um, and then uh, a, a low monthly fee in addition to that. So uh, any any other last questions before we wrap this up, Edward? Uh, no. Uh, appreciate the time. Uh, excited to take a look at the materials. By the way, I am uh, thanking you profusely. Ramon and I both are thanking you profusely for uh, – being a guest of ours on the show today and making it far more entertaining than it would have been otherwise for me. I know that. And uh, again, if you if you want to send a referral to Edward Encinas with Realty Executives in Tucson, Arizona, uh, 520-401-9131. You can tell he's a nice guy and he'll do a great job for you. And he, he now has me helping him if there's anything complicated comes up. Uh, so again, thank you, Edward, for joining us. And, uh, and just for the rest of you, once again, we want to thank all of you for joining us today. Please do visit us at fearlessagent.com. You can call me directly anytime at 480-385-8810. And uh, everybody, if you go to iTunes and give us – you go into iTunes in the search bar and give us a review of the podcast – 
Uh, you can visit us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. I'll be at a Starbucks later, the dry cleaners, wherever we go. Until next week, I want all of you to always have fun because if it's not fun at Fearless Agent, we don't do it. Always be humble and most of all, be fearless. See you next week. Oh,